Uh, I, I lied in the, the title. It's actually just multiple exit MLI regions because I missed up the terminology like a f yeah, like a few other people do. So Mehdi, what's up, uh, what's up with regions? Yeah, so uh, thank you, Jeff. <laughs> regions are this uh, pretty uh, fundamental concept in MLIR, but they are really this, uh, from a control flow point of view, single entry and single exit uh, list of blocks. Uh, and this is uh, maybe time to revisit that, right? Uh, uh, so this is an overview of the, the control flow. On the, on the left, you have the LLVM control flow, classical CFG, and on the right, we have the, LL, the MLIR one where the control enters through a knob, gets into the region, it can flow inside the region, even if the op has multiple region, between region, like a for loop or while loop, but then at the end, it has to go back to the op and move to the next operation in the parent block. That's the, that's the fundamentals. And that uh, can be limiting uh, this model because sometimes you may want different things, right? Jeff, you have some use case in mind. Yeah, like let's say you're building a compiler for a hypothetical Python-like language and uh, these programming languages tend to have returns inside ifs, inside loops, breaks inside ifs, continue statements that you can't cleanly model with a um, control flow or you can't cleanly model with a single entry, single exit region. And so what you end up having to do is, well, the IR for our language is just going to be a control flow graph. But there are various problems with control flow graphs. One is you lose a lot of high-level information. There is structure to control flow in programming languages, unless you're putting go-tos in your C++ code or whatever. And we lose this when we drop down to control flow graphs. You lose uh, variable scoping. You lose also even debug information about lexical scopes. The other issue with control flow graphs is writing algorithms on control flow graphs is like an absolute nightmare. And if you only have these in your code, and maybe you can try to raise out some regions if they're there. Uh, this is this is life. Like you're just going to be suffering, and I don't want to suffer. So uh, what do you do when you have a, an early return inside an if? Well, I mean, you put the for op, you put the if. Oh, let's just put a return terminator inside an if op. That's okay, right? Right. Um, so <laughs> what is this? This is essentially inventing a new paradigm for region control flow in MLIR. Um, and We'll say, that there are, we'll say that there are two kinds of ops that really play a role here. We have the parent operations, nodes. These are operations that contain regions. And you have terminators, like return, break, continue, yield, right? If you want to go from the end of an if to end of an if region to after the if operation. And we'll say that these nodes form a bit of like a tree where um, any terminator can branch to like any ancestor operation. Yeah, so fundamentally we have this nesting of operation, and so if we have a if nested inside a for loop, and inside this if we have a return, fundamentally the control goes up to the parent function, right? So it's really hard to model, and we don't want arbitrary go-to saying that any op can branch anywhere. So we need to think about it in a, in a different way, right? So, so this is what it looks like. Uh, those two, the return or the continue, are all having effect on the control flow that are hard to model. If I look at the region inside the, the four, um, we have multiple ways to exit. And when we say multiple exit, it's not about the statement that exit. The problem is not that there is one return and a continue and both of them can exit. The problem is like, when we exit this region, there are two different places we can go to. That's the multiple exits. One will go outside of the four, uh, outside of the function even, and the other one um, will just like go back to the four itself. And that's what really breaks the, the model of the control. But with this model, we can do algorithms like mem to reg, which if anyone's written this on structural control flow and MLIR, you know it's really easy to check if you have a stack allocation that is loop variant. You just go block users, you know, if it's a store inside a loop, there we go, right? But now we can write the exact same algorithm on the same kinds of loops with breaks inside ifs, with uh, continues, with all these stuff. And if you look, we have a for loop in a hypothetical Python-like language, and then there's an if break, and when we perform SSA formation, the break itself has this variadic set of operands that will transfer these values to the return of the while loop that is two levels up. A more interesting example could be function splitting, which is part of uh, coroutine formation, which is an implementation of async functions in certain languages. Um, there's no early returns in this example, but the same algorithm will work if you have like more, as many regions as you really want. You just start from the top of the function, 
lock the IR down, keep a set of live variables, and then each time you find a suspension point, those live variables become spilled, they have to go onto the coroutine frame. Easy peasy. So um, when Jeff was building uh, the module language at Modular, you know, he made heavy use of this, returning in the middle of a loop. Uh, and module is built on top of MLIR. And um, unfortunately, when Jeff told me this, I pointed him to the MLIR language reference. I was like, what you're doing is not legal in MLIR. Like, this breaks the mental model or the semantic model of MLIR on the control flow. And I sent him the quote, and I was like, well, we need to find a solution. And actually, that's great that we have uh, languages built on top of MLIR because we have to tackle those problems now. So we need to revisit this and change Langgraph, but not in a way that would be too disruptive. We need this structured control flow. Um, but right now, the consequences of breaking Langgraph are not too bad, because if you build your compiler with MLIR and you're not using too many MLIR generic transformation, nobody will break your assumptions on your weird control flow. Um, so you can get around it by marking your control flow as your for loop, your if with opaque memory effect, and that's going to hinder optimization enough that uh, that nothing will break. But maybe what we need is a new region type, um, a new way to think about it. But we need to figure out side effects. Do you have ideas, Jeff? Right. So what we effectively have here with a break inside an if is that this if operation from the perspective of the surrounding ops is like a conditional return. It could just exit your basic block. And that really hurts a lot of assumptions about code motion in MLIR with side effects. Um, right now, what we can say is like, okay, this condition, you have an if, it has stuff inside of it, it has recursive memory effects based on the operations inside its regions. But this conditional exit will go who knows where. Right, and so how do we model side effects on this for um, code motion? Well, I, if you look back to the 1990s, which is where pretty much all compiler research was done, uh, there's some work on superblocks and hyperblocks and code motion across basic blocks at like the very low level assembly level. And what you do with a conditional exit, which in this case could be like a branch or a conditional branch in a linear sequence of instructions, is you look at the live out registers or variables. That is, what are the, what are the live variables that are, uh, that are modified, read, write, yeah, <laughs> after, after this particular statement. And in fact, we can do the same thing here. You start from example, there's an if, there's a break, and there's this uh, percent %s. Uh, it's not rendered very well on the slide, but this is percent %s, a stack variable that is loaded after the for loop, which is where the break branches to. So you walk backwards in the IR, and you build a set of like live variables, and each time you find one of these control flow operations, you say, okay, well, what are the current like memory effects on the live variables? Put them on there. Now, when you go and analyze, can I move this load and store in the if, or you know, before or after the if, well, the store can't be moved after the if, because the if could branch to a, a location in the program where it's read. But we can, load, we can move the load before the if, because the if only has a read effect on the same piece of memory. Yeah, that's it, any questions? Oh, wait, no questions. So I think to keep, keep, to keep us to time, give us a bit of slack, it's probably best we move on to the next presentation. So thank, thank you very much, Jeff. And <laughs>